All right, so let's do some Bible contradictions. All right, yesterday we did three, the Sabbath day, primaries, and seeing God, uh, human sacrifice. Okay, let's do this one here. Thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Melech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. Leviticus 18, verse 21. In Judges, though, the tale of Jephthah, who led the Israelites against the Ammonites is being told, being fearful of defeat, this good religious man sought to guarantee victory by getting God firmly on his side. So he prayed to God, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into my hands, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me, when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. Judges 11, verses 30 and 31. The terms were acceptable to God. Remember, he is supposed to be omniscient and know the future. So he gave victory to Jephthah, and the first whatsoever that greeted him upon his glorious return was his daughter, as God surely knew would happen if God is God. True to his vow, the general made a human sacrifice to his only child, to God. Of his only child, to God. Okay. Again, that's in Judges 11. Okay, so is this a contradiction? Well, no. Not even close. All right, it's just uh, another example of somebody trying really hard. And so let me, first of all, make this real simple. All right. It wasn't God... Uh, doing this. This was Jephthah. And Jephthah made the vow. And so the lesson to be learned here is don't make that sort of vow. All right. He screwed up big time, didn't he? All right. So let's take a look at Judges 11. It's interesting because I was just having this conversation with somebody on Saturday. And I plan on going into it more let's see where was that down here let's see his daughter right there he said go okay so uh, Jeff thought you know uh, you know he had to keep his word and so his daughter's like well let me go up to the mountains for a couple months and be well my virginity I and my fellows right and so uh, Jeff thought said, okay, and so she did that for two months, and then she came back, and then uh, she was sacrificed, right? And the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of Jephthah, the Gileite, four days in a year. All right, so, again, the lesson to be learned here is don't make that sort of vow, right? Uh, so I think uh, there's something here, if I can remember... Something here in um, Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Matthew 5, where he says, let me find it here. Where he says, You've heard it old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Now, I don't know if that's yea, yea, or yeah, yeah. I'm going to say yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, nay, nay. I don't know. And okay, so anyways, and and anyways, uh, that's uh, interesting. Uh, but I, again, the the lesson to be learned here is don't make that sort of, um, you know, that sort of vow. 
That's where he made the mistake. It's not like he defeated his enemies because he made that vow. It's not like God said, well, okay, you made that vow, so I'm going to make it so you defeat your enemy. Uh, Jeff thought just he, he shouldn't have made that vow. That's the lesson to be learned, in my opinion. I mean, there's really no other way to look at it, in my opinion. And uh, to say this is a contradiction, uh, it... And it, it doesn't make any sense. If you want to say that Jephthah sinned, okay. Now, I, he's not the only one in the Bible that sinned. But if you want to say that he sinned, yeah. But it, it's not a contradiction. All right, so let's, let's move on. I spent way too much time on that, I think. Power of God. With God, all things are possible. Matthew 19, verse 26. The Lord was with Judah, and he drave... Out the inhabitants of the mountain, but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley because they had chariots of iron. Again, uh, Judges 1. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. So the Lord was with Judah and he drove out the inhabitants of the mountain, but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley because they had chariots of iron okay so this is uh, Judah took out Gaza with the coast thereof and Ascalon with the coast thereof Ekron with the coast thereof and the Lord was with Judah and he drove out the inhabitants of the mountain but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley because they had chariots of iron and they gave Hebron Hebron unto Caleb and as Moses said and he expelled Thence the three sons of Anak. All right, so um, I guess the the contradiction is that uh, well, I guess not all things are possible with God. <laughs> no, I don't think that's the case at all. We already saw in Exodus uh, when God led the people out of Egypt, uh, God destroyed all. The, the Pharaoh and his his army, and they had chariots, and God destroyed them all in the Red Sea, right? So it, uh, this it's not a situation where it's not wasn't just wasn't possible to defeat these guys. They were just too tough for us, and God just it too too tough. Well, it might be too tough for men, but not too tough for God. Uh, so this is not you know like, this is not well. God just couldn't beat these guys. You just can't, you know, God just doesn't have the power to defeat people with chariots of iron. That's not the case at all. Uh, it's a silly argument. Um, but uh, good try, anyway. <laughs> Personal injury. Thou shalt give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. Exodus 21, verse 23 through 35. Matthew 5, verse 31. Ye resist not evil, but what? But whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Right there it is. Oops. I am out of control right there. Okay. But I say unto you. All right. So you've heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. All right. But let's, so let's go to this Exodus oh, what am I doing here? Exodus 21 I think it was wasn't it uh oh uh oh let's try it that way okay <laughs> All right, Exodus 21 23 through 35 alright let's see what's going on here Alright, Exodus 23 through 25. So I'm thinking here, uh, you resist not evil, but one whosoever shall smite the other, I shall turn to him. The other also, I, I'm not sure how this is a contradiction. It, you know, I'm, I don't know, is it me? I can't figure out 
Let's see. Thou shalt give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. Oh, um, life for life, eye for eye. Let's see. Life, eye, tooth, hand, foot, burn, wound, stripe. And this is talking about cheek. So, I'm not sure. Uh, I think there's too much to be assumed here. This is bad here. There's too much to be assumed. You have to just sort of skim through that and say, yep, yeah, that's not that's not right. That's a contradiction. There is no God. You can't trust the Bible. I mean, there's no connection here. But it, too much needs to be explained, if you know what I'm talking about. So, like with Exodus uh, 21... What was that? Verse 23. If any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life. And thou shalt give... See that? Hold on a second. Then... Then! See then? Is that then there? Nope. They took out this first line right there. And if any mischief follow, then... Thou shalt give life for life. So isn't that interesting? Let's go up here. If men strive and hurt a woman with child, so that her fruit depart from her, and yet no mischief follow, he shall be surely punished, according to, according as the woman's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. And if any mischief does follow, then thou shalt give life for her life. So let me... Go over this again. If men strive and hurt a woman with child, so that her fruit depart from her, which is you know, like a miscarriage, and yet no mischief follow, he shall be surely punished according as the woman's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. However, if any mischief does follow, then thou shalt give life for life. All right, so th there's not proper context here. And again, I'm not seeing, I, I, I don't know. So this would have to be explained to me how somebody could see this as a contra contradiction. I think there's too much... No, there's not enough there, not enough information there to to uh, you make your ridiculous point. So, okay, that's enough. All right, well, if you guys enjoy this, let me know, and I'll I'll do some again tomorrow.